Welcome back to another podcast. This week, we're going to talk about... We're going to get a little bit granular this week. I like to use that word, Jacko. Sometimes I hear people say it, that is a good word because it perfectly describes where we're going. We're going into a little bit of training program detail around reps and sets. Now, don't switch off and get bored because there's some juicy stuff within this. Whereas I think a few people in the fitness industry have lost their mind when it comes to thinking about where we should structure and how we should use reps and sets to create specific adaptations or maybe non-specific adaptations that will all be revealed as we dive into this week's conversation. All right. Sorry. When you said granular, I was thinking grains and I was wondering if we were discussing my second favorite carbohydrate, obviously the first being the potato and the second being um, oats. Um, maybe that can be, that could be for, uh, for, for another day, but something, if you're not necessarily, um, this is going to segue into the, uh, th- thanking the podcast sponsors. Um, if you're not trying to um, fuel yourself sort of ketogenically, then carbohydrates is a great energy source to do something like a big, <laughs> uh, a big long run. Uh, what's more exciting than a big long run or a, or a short fast run or any number of different distances of runs between five and 21 K um, would be to do some runs with some obstacles in them, which sounds very much like an obstacle course, but the podcast sponsors Spartan, it's not just any obstacle race. It's like what we would sort of call um, the uh, the real deal, or as I, th- I think the French uh, would describe it as the uh, the creme brulee, or the Pierre de Resistance. That's French, isn't it? What's the French <laughs> for Pierre brulee. de Resistance? <laughs> I don't know. Actually, it's like the Rolls Royce of obstacle course races in my book. This one, like, that's that's the creme that's... brulee. You've still got me there. <laughs> I don't even. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Um, What's going on in my mind is I don't even know if you. If that, that I, I'm wondering, is Jacko know that it's not called the creme brulee or the creme de la creme? Is that what you meant? But you've you've intentionally ranked the creme brulee. Uh, uh, either way, the mysteries of your mind. All of those. All of those things. All of those things. <laughs> um, now, very excitingly, um, not only are Spartan Race sponsoring the podcast, but as part of that, they are very kindly and very generously offering. And if you haven't heard, listen to this, then wherever you've wherever you been. But there's 50 free places available to come and join us at a Spartan Race. Well, you can actually join any Spartan Race you want, but the invitation is to come and join us on the 16th, 17th of July, the Midlands. Um, and uh, obviously there are a lot of spaces been taken. The, tea, the wolf pack is growing for that event, but there are still some spaces available. You do have to do a couple of things. One is um, to show that you are actually going to uh, take part in this and that you've done more training than Tim, thinking that Tim has done zero training for this. So <laughs> don't be scared if you haven't done much, but just uh, you can at least mock yourself up in pretending that you're doing some training for it to get one of the free spaces. Uh, worth over £90, I think, to join the event. And it's going to be free if you do these things. Take a picture or a video of you in your training slash getting ready for slash pretending like Tim to train for the event. Uh, tag spart at spartan use the hashtag spartan race and then importantly tag us at scoreguard sense and send that picture or video to us on instagram so that we can uh, validate you have done all those things and then you'll be given the free code to use on the website awesome um, it is true. I have done minimum amounts of training and it's also based on, we did a tough mudder before there was a COVID thing. And, um, that was, I think that was about eight or nine miles. Was it? It wasn't that far, was it? It should have been um, called a tough colder because I didn't get that muddy, but I got yeah. very cold and wet. Yeah. And it took us a while to get around. Um, so I'm, I'm basing my experience off that and going, can I do that twice? Hopefully a little bit faster. And, and what the thing where we did went wrong on the tough mudder was we spent far too long pissing about on the obstacles so there was one bit where we remember when those big rollers the Toblerone rollers in the water and like ideally you would have got in got out because spending water time yeah. in cold dirty water is only going to be ne- negative for performance and we were there for half an hour just we got rolling the, around these things yeah we were going to the team environment it's like, i'm going to help everybody get through and everyone there was there was a nice um element to that but yes that we, we did probably spend at least half an hour doing that initial yeah. uh, obstacle so <laughs> 
for, for anybody listening to this game, there's actually now there is a, there is I understand there is a 10k team. So like we are kind of by default having to look at the 21k because I can't do the Sunday. Um, but there is now a 10k option, so you can do that. You're always a 5k option on the Sunday as well. So there are going to be people at both yeah. days. And my number one rule for or suggestion for your um, approach to an obstacle course race, if you haven't done one before, is that of selfishness. Get yourself around. <laughs> Don't worry about anybody else. That will mean that you get the most. <laughs> the best out of the experience I don't know if that's, is that is that in, is that the right message in jacko and where we're going with this one um it's 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 great it's great <laughs> messaging if that's what the person wants to hear um i don't know that it's necessarily the number one rule because i do believe um we had a couple of fairly like one person doing like the european championships or something yeah. join us last time and uh shout out to um to to fit geek ocr steve who I believe the number one rule was something to do with around footwear, which um, mm. I think mine was highly inappropriate at the time. Um, but uh, you can do this when you leave. It's not put. No, I, I've, I ain't got anything else. I've got rid of everything. I only I'm only vivoing. So yes, I'll be in my vivos. Yeah, for put sure. the big lugs on. Right, let's get off this one yeah. and into some chat about reps and sets. So sit back and enjoy this week's podcast where we get a little bit granular, there we go, twice in one, in one sitting, around program design and how to actually get what you want or whatever that might look like. Here's the jingle. Listen, players. <laughs> You're listening to the Movement, Strength and Play podcast by the School of Calisthenics. Here are your hosts, Tim and Jacko. Now, I want to break out of what is potentially a little echo chamber um, today. In terms of, we, we Jack and I had a conversation around what do we see in the fitness landscape at the moment? What's, what's happening out there in fit world? And one of the things that I see, and I don't know if it's just being manipulated by the algorithms that rule more about my life than I probably appreciate, but I tend to see the fitness industry is hell-bent on volume at the moment. And I don't see many people structuring programs around three sets of 10 or eight reps, four sets. You see a little bit more of kind of like the maximal strength ranges where people might be kind of doing powerlifting type work, five by fives, four by fives, that sort of stuff. But what I do see a lot of is like 50, 40, 30, 20, 21, 15, 12, 9, these kind of rep ranges. Mm. And when I came through strength and conditioning school, those weren't an option. Like, they were not on the, on the reps and sets. was the highest you're allowed to do. Yeah. And that, that was, was like 12, really. almost blasphemy to put that down <laughs> at that point. Like, it was typically not... In, in certain sectors around 2008, if you put any more than 12 on... Um, on a training program, then you effectively were a PT, not a strength and conditioning coach. That was literally what got said to me once. <laughs> right. um, since proven to be complete and utter garbage. Um, but I do think it's interesting to think about this because people are often getting pulled into and influenced by what other people are doing. So why do we find ourselves doing these higher rep ranges? Or why are people programming them? And there's a real source of where that's come from. But what, what's why are we not still using or why might we choose to use a four sets, eight reps type of protocol with a 90 second rest period in between. That still has a massive value and it's actually where the science sits in terms of physical adaptation. So we're going to dig into a little bit of this one, but Jacko, give us a little bit of flavor as your experience as coming through the programming scientific kind of approach to writing training programs for athletes and then what that's looked like in terms of a calisthenics program and anything else you want to wax on this one. Um, I just, you reminded me of, you rem <laughs> I didn't mean to do that then. You reminding you remind me, um, of, I'm thinking, I'm just, it's just took me back to pre-season where we didn't do a lot of high rep stuff, typically like when I was playing rugby and we came back to one pre-season and S and C coach Joe Brunsky had, um, it was like, oh, I've got this new, I've got something, I've got something new and a bit nasty for you. And it's like, oh, what have you dream? He was basically just used to think, use the off season to dream up ways to just torture us when, when you'd come, when you'd come back. He, he'd be like, he'd be allowed six weeks to do whatever he wanted with you, um, and he called it R twenty, which was like twenty repetitions with good form, uh, as I say, but um, like a reasonable pace, and it, um, and we were doing like five, six, eight 
set like a lot of sets was like you were doing way over um a hundred reps in quite a short space of time and it would be a good three or four days before you could sit on the toilet without um sort of going to, like so there was a, a lot of stress on the body and we weren't used to as you said like we weren't used to those higher rep ranges because you'd be sticking in your typical either if we were doing power or we're doing like more maximum strength stuff it would be like you know threes to fives for the max strength stuff and then like your, your eights your tens and then you know maybe maybe dabbling into a 12 um but nothing nothing that high um the to sort of like if i just reflecting on my own training and that definitely created an awful different stimulus. And in terms of like hypertrophy, a lot of the boys in preseason did like really well on that. Interestingly, I didn't. I didn't respond well to it. Like I, it was almost like it was, I don't know what, it was almost like I was like, my body was just like eating itself. I didn't, I was struggled to like, I was a bit of a hard classic sort of like your hard gainer anyway. And um, that much volume, um, yeah. Whereas, but but for, for, I was more of a, the anomaly most guys like packed on were doing sort of like almost like a kilo a week or something like that if you were like getting your nutrition and eating like so packing on some decent decent size in pre-season for a bit um the the something we've talked about before is like and i did it yesterday um i did sevens oh just, just to complete it just to be completely we've joked about this before but it's in that it's in that range but why seven just never gets any love but like i at, at, the, at the moment don't i actually i mean this is this would be slightly but my training is different at the moment particularly because i'm trying to do like an ultra marathon where there's like i'm not you know you don't count your reps when you're running but then with the strength stuff that i'm doing um i'm I incorporate some of the, like the breathwork stuff. So I'm actually doing a little bit of like, I might be, um, I might be counting my reps during a breath hold, for example. So I'm, but I'm not trying to do a certain number of them. And then I'm trying to be able to be in control of my breathing when I finish that. And it might be, they end up doing 18 reps or whatever, or whatever it ends up being, but it's, I'm not setting out an intention for it, but I'm looking for a different purpose to the training. I'm not, and I'm not doing low, rep stuff because i'm not at the moment requiring like a uh, a strength adaptation and i also don't need sort of hypertrophy stuff at the moment because of the thing that i'm trying to do in a couple of months time so um as we would i guess always say in a lot of uh our advice it always depends and one of the and the most important thing is like doing making sure that you're training reflects the things that you're trying to improve on so um it might be nice potentially well you can you can share any thoughts on that um as well as like if someone is wanting to do we've probably talked about this before uh, in terms of those diff of different rep ranges like if you want to do more strength endurance this is where you need to hit and if you want to do more hypertrophy this is some of the stuff that you need to to hit it's just my big thing for people is and for just for myself is like no making sure just knowing that like does your training reflect what you want to do and it might be some of the some for me sometimes for me now it is simply as like i just want to enjoy my training so does my do i feel good and do i enjoy the session is my uh is potentially like how i'm evaluating it which is very unscientific but it's just where i'm currently at with um with my training I think it's an interesting, like, just conversation to reflect on because if I recognise my own biases in this, like, I come from a place of strength and conditioning working with athletes where we specifically need adaptations or certain adaptations yeah. for performance improvements. Whereas a lot of people might come at this conversation from a more generalist approach and go, well, I just want generally want to be quite fit, able, general, like, moderate levels of strength. like it. And that's what I'm kind of seeing a little bit of, of just going, what are you getting what is it my guess my question with training is always like what is a physical adaptation that you are seeking and because we've probably come from a background where it is quite specific i want to do a hypertrophy block because that's what i need in order to get a bigger muscle which can produce more force and therefore give me better power outputs in six to 12 months time potentially whereas for lots of people going in and just getting work done 
is actually the most important thing. Mm. But I kind of like still look at my own training and go, well, I'm still interested in specific adaptations. So I want to, and that's where you, you're going to utilize those rep ranges, which will be in every kind of personal training and strength and conditioning book of what happens if you do one rep or what's the adaptation and what's the intensity that you should be targeting at that one repetition range at maximal strength type work. And what happens if you get 10 or 12 repetitions because the physiological, physiological adaptation through that spectrum will be different. So your max strength will typically be between one and five, and there's gray areas in between, right? Let's not think it's exclusive, yeah. but typically if you want to load maximal strength, you can work between the one to five rep range. And those are going to be off percentages of your one repetition max of 100% of your one rep max, the most amount of weight you can lift for one repetition. You can do no more than one through to, let's say, 85% of your one rep max at your five rep ranges. So you can go five reps at 85%. You're probably not going to get six or seven out. You then start to move into what's typically hypertrophy rep ranges from six through to 10 to 12. But research is now suggesting that you can get hypertrophy all the way to 20 reps to your point, Jacko, from before, because yeah. what we're doing then is high gain hypertrophy of type one muscle fibers and type two muscle fibers, because they both will respond differently to different sort of loading schemes. I think the thing for me is where I'm looking at it and going, when I see people going into workouts where they've got large kind of rep, rep ranges where we might be going 21s, 10s, all this kind of stuff thrown together, 50 of that or whatever it might be, mixed in with some erg, erg on, work on like a ski erg or something like that, the fitness combo, combined piece. I think this is kind of like a self, a bit of a reflective piece of going, since the, the, the CrossFit and functional fitness has influenced the fitness market so much, it wasn't there when I first started in the, in the industry. Yeah. So what's happened, I think, now, and the way that I look at it, like to your something that you had done with training before would have been your strength work was done in the gym your kind of one to ten rep range kind of work yeah. and your conditioning work was done on the pitch yeah whereas yeah. conditioning i think has now very much become part of the standard yeah. gym environment as we've got skiers assault bikes all that sort of all of that kind of fitness stuff has been brought inside so we've now got this kind of like combined environment where you can get away with doing a more general conditioning type program but i was actually at the gym this morning and looked at it and, and was like what I see group classes doing is it's, it's conditioning because I don't think, and people might argue if I'm wrong about this one, but you're not going to get stronger from doing like high volume, like kettlebell snatches or even like high volume kind of pull up work. If you're mixing it in with conditioning work, because you're just going to get tired. So your, your body's ability or your muscles ability to continue to produce the amount of force, which is going to create a strength adaptation yeah. is going to be compromised. So you get some strength endurance or you get maybe some um, conditioning or fitness type elements. But if you want to get better at pull-ups or you want to get better at muscle-ups, then you need to go and train strength-based adaptations and respect that that needs a rest period. My last point, Jack, I'm going to bounce it back yeah. over to you. So maximal strength type work, because of the energy system that you're utilizing, we typically need between three and five minutes of rest in between sets to allow you to go and train at that intensity to get that strength-based adaptation, given your the desired yeah. objective or the, the target adaptation you're looking for. If you go and try and lift heavy and you don't give yourself the rest period, what you're going to find is that load just drops down. You're just never going yeah. to get anywhere near it because you're not getting a recovery in. So it comes down to this specificity. And I guess the challenge here is like, I see a lot of volume based mixed modal kind of conditioning work with some strength work in there. I think my message to people really is understand what for me at least, and here's my bias, what is strength work and what is conditioning work. And if you're doing a lot of conditioning work, thinking you're going to get strong and that's going to improve your performance in calisthenics or whatever it is you're looking for, there's probably a disconnect there. Like last one. Yeah. I look at yeah. CrossFit classes and you don't get better at CrossFit by doing CrossFit classes. You get better at doing CrossFit by training your strength variables and then taking it into a class environment where you can then execute and utilize the strength that you've gained as a result of doing the five by five deadlifts with a three to five minute rest period. That just doesn't get programmed really in group settings mm -hmm. very regularly. Yeah. Yeah. Now that the, there's one, the point that you make around like the disconnect, I think is, is something that, I feel is it is important that me training or a person training in a way that is helping create everything from like they want to do something very specific around like learning a skill or they want to do something specific in terms of 
maximal strength or they want to do something specific in terms of hypertrophy or they want to do something less specific they just want to move better or they want to enjoy or be more flexible whatever it is if the training reflects that then there is no disconnect and like we're all good like do the thing that you're trying to do if you are trying to do x but have got a bit there's a disconnect or we've got confused or we've got misled or whatever it's caused to do it but your training doesn't actually reflect what you're trying to achieve then that disconnect is um I sort of, for some reason, I don't want to use the word problem, but I've said it. So because I don't feel like it feels like it fits, but it's almost that like, um, yeah, that's just where someone, that's where you want to, um, if you feel like that's maybe you, like connect with someone, a coach or get some advice from, for some people and, and try to maybe, maybe do a bit of learning yourself to understand like, okay, uh, these are the things I want to do. What, how does my training need to reflect um, to make this happen? That's the, that's sort of my, um, my personal takeaway from this and just like reflecting on my training and going like, okay, is it, is what I'm doing now currently setting me up for what I think I hope I'm getting out of it. If that makes sense. Um, yeah. and not, not, not getting out not, but and particularly if you're not getting, if you're not getting out of your training, what you're hoping to, then maybe there is a disconnect. That's probably one thing to reflect on. Mm. I think for most people, that in our community most people with doing calisthenics are going to want to get stronger like that's going to be an objective yeah. and i think a lot of people are also wanting to make sure they maintain some level of kind of metabolic conditioning or fitness um and i think that's for me where it's important just to differentiate between the two of, of how do you get more specific about getting the strength gains that you want to get you closer to your goals and then also building that conditioning components and and not kind of mushing them together so that you end up with yeah. something which is kind of to be yeah. fair, if you mush it together, like you'll get fitter. Like you'll get fitness is the yeah. easiest one. It's the, it's the most simple one to get. Just do more work and do less rest and, and change the intensities yeah. around that. It's not difficult to do that. Um, if it's a non-specific adaptation, it's different if it's sport-specific. But got where the strength thing. side of things is it takes more time. Go. Um, just to say, like, um, I'm trying to get good at running a long distance, but I'd also still want to be strong. I like to be, I still want to have some strength. So what I could do in theory would be, well, put a weighted vest on and go and run a lot. That's ticking both those two <laughs> yeah. boxes, isn't it? But it, but it, but we, we, you laugh because you know that it isn't ticking those boxes. It's just like mushing, mushing the things together. So do I do some trade, does some of my training focus on some strength and then on a different day or a different thing is then I'm going to do the run. So then I'm getting, um, different doses, but trying not to mush them um, together too much the other thing I've, i was going to say actually which is uh, about you were talking about like respecting the rest period you need in between some maximal strength work and like you say if, uh, any strength to weight ratio is if you're trying to achieve something in calisthenics something you've, that feels impossible that you've never done before there's going to be yes probably a skill element to it but there's going to massively be a, a strength and the stronger you are i've said this loads of times the stronger you are the easier the thing is to do um and we we've had this question a few times before where we find it difficult to just not do anything for three to four to five minutes because we feel like we're unproductive. Yeah. So it's like, can I, can I do a bit of stretching or can I do a bit of this or can I do a bit of this in that rest period? And it's like, you can, but just understand that you're potentially diluting what it is that you're then going to go and do. And the more um, effort and energy that you're using up during that rest period, it's going to influence then your actual force output for the strength gains you're going to get and that so if you know that that you're doing that then that's fine and you might be trying to juggle a couple of things at once but know that you are diluting it um rather than almost challenge if you find it very difficult to sit and just wait for those three minutes then um maybe that's a good challenge for you of just like maybe you do a tiny bit of mindfulness then maybe we talked a little bit around um can you can you can you do something with your breathing to just down regulate a little bit for those three four five minutes so that you come back into the session back into your then work um a little bit more facilitating that recovery so rather than diluting and diminishing but in that rest period can you maximize that rest period would be something that i would be considering to do but it that takes that's going to then take a little bit of discipline what it might look like from uh, if you're going to ha try and help recovery for breathing, which I think we probably talked about last time, but just a very, very simplest one of like, have your breathing under control, in and out through the nose, 
and extending the exhale is more parasympathetic promoting for that re, uh, for that recovery response so doing some longer nasal exhales for a few minutes is is going to be beneficial uh, for that recovery period so there's something you can drop in straight away or have a go at dropping in straight away and you feel like you're doing something which is often one of the big things for people i think it's like the, the challenge around that about rest periods particularly is where people want to be productive they've got, I've got a limited amount of time so if yeah. i go into the gym and i'm trying to get this maximum strength adaptation and i've got to do three minutes minimum between sets you look at how much you can actually get done in a workout and think oh, it's not great like i've not i don't think i've achieved a lot and and oftentimes when we're talking to athletes about maximum strength training and said you're going to leave the gym feeling like you've not done that much work today you're not going to be covered in sweat you're probably not going to be that sore like it's going to feel like you've just lifted some heavy weights and gone home and that's the thing that i think i want to get across to people is just to understand that that specificity and it might not seem like you've done a lot but in terms of getting the fastest way towards getting your goals if that's a muscle up for example you need to yeah. build that maximal strength in the pulling movement to then be able to get the power output that you're going to need like the fastest way to do that is just a really high quality work and you, you hit the nail on the head jacket when it comes down to discipline of actually coming in and going i'm just going to hit these reps that's the target for the session today yeah that's what i'm going to focus on and you can look at the rest of your training week like I don't tend to mash together into one session fitness and or conditioning and strength. I'll have a strength based sessions most of the time and I'll put a, a, a conditioning based session in there because the focus then for me means that I don't have, if I've got like lifting based movements within it, I don't have to worry about that being that hard. I can, I can just hit that at an intensity, which is just going to get the conditioning output rather than going in there and going, I need to go and do some heavier weights and then, compromising on technique and form because that's not the focus of that workout i can do that work and i can do i can get better at shoulder pressing or whatever it might be in my strength based work the conditioning is then like just get heart rate up do a moderate amount of work make it difficult but move well and then just see those as two 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 different things that flies in the face with a lot, where a lot of people are at but that's kind of where my thoughts and opinion are about structuring a workout at the moment it's just yeah. quite because i want this I, i'm chasing specificity of adaptation effectively and and not trying to just kind of blur it because I think when you're time, this is kind of just going to look back to my first point. Yeah. When you're time poor, like I want to know that what I'm doing is getting me what I need or what I want rather than yeah. just kind of like, it's that classic shotgun versus a sniper yeah. approach. Like I can do all of this work. Some of it might be getting me stronger. Some of it might be getting me fitter. Some of it might be negating each other. I just going to do a lot. My, my solution to what I want is just to do a lot. I'm like, I actually want to do less. And that's not yeah. lazy. It's just like I want to be specific so I know what I'm getting yeah. and therefore I can be confident that my training program is in the, going in the right direction. Yeah. And then, and, and also then, like, when you're efficient with your time, it means you can go and do more of the other other thing. You might love training, but there'll be other things in your life, hopefully, that you love also. And it's like you've got more time to go and do those other things that you love doing, like going and running a Spartan race. Or mm. hopefully you have some things that you love that are non-training based as well. <laughs> Perfect. Well, that was just a bit of a download, some stuff that was running around our heads mm. this week around sort of just what we're seeing out there, people doing, and just some clarity on there because we know that training program design is complicated and difficult and can be confusing, and you can often just got get pulled into seeing what's happening on Instagram. And, and also remember, like, so what you see on social media is going to be a snapshot of a workout. So people will probably typically post the hardest thing that they're doing or the bit that's, like, the most Insta-worthy. Um but that kind that that one minute that they show you doesn't necessarily represent everything that they're doing. So just bear in mind what a whole session might look like and just get some clarity and go, what am I actually doing? And understand a little bit more about the reps and sets. If that is if you are chasing specific physiological adaptations in terms of maximum strength or hypertrophy or strength endurance, whatever it might be, get clear on your rep ranges, respect those because they're proven in the science to work and tried and tested through generations of elite athletes, bodybuilders, powerlifters, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then look at how what, it, what does it mean when or what does it look like when you're doing those other elements of your training program um i might do this because i'm good well, i always want, want to encourage people to go i want to see more people sharing the catch me like here's the worst thing i did today in my training session or here's the <laughs> thing i'm all the things that i do here's the thing i'm worst at like let's start sh let's um a, uh, you know i'm thinking of the opposite of a highlight reel it must be a low light reel um, mm. Rather than sharing your yeah, things creme I'm brulee, <laughs> yeah, well, things I'm rubbish at. <laughs> yeah. Rather than sharing the creme brulee, let's share the um, 
Eaton Mess. <laughs> I like Eaton Mess. I was going to say just like something a bit, something that average. Like that a, surprises like a, me. You don't like Eaton Mess? and cream. Mate, it's oh. too sweet. I'm not a big meringue uh, fan. It's basically sugar. Uh, I've White got, death. um, maybe also my experience of, uh, Catherine makes things and when it just looks a bit messy, she might call it an eat and mess. Okay. And maybe it's actually nothing to do with that. Because when you said eat and mess, I think I had more of a picture of Rocky Road in my head and that's not the same thing. Uh, okay. Now, eat and mess Rocky is like is cream, good. meringue, I think I've got some kind of fruity sort of stuff in it. But right, it's yeah, a similar sounds... to Rocky Road. Rocky Road chocolate with marshmallows in. <laughs> and, and biscuit and stuff. And else, all, all the things. Oh, um, I'm not quite sure how we ended up here. Um, <laughs> I'm going to take a break again. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, right, so if you've got any questions that you'd like us to answer, guys, please send them to us. Uh, you can get us on our email addresses. It's tim at or david at schoolofcalisthenics.com. Um, or you can Instagram them to us, if that is also a preferred medium. We're not on TikTok, are we, Jacko? Um, I don't school, know if yeah, you can send DMs on TikTok. Uh, oh, we've got TikTok. There is a School of Calisthenics TikTok. Yeah, you need to go to the program, Timbo. Hmm. No, I don't, I'm trying to. You don't, you're not. You're not in TikTok. I've shared day. a few things on on TikTok for us. Yeah, we are on TikTok. There we yeah. go. I didn't even know that. Um, well, <laughs> so if you want to get <laughs> if you want to get in touch with us, you can do that, and we would love to answer your questions. So send them in, and uh, we'll do that next time we have an available slot in our busy podcast schedule. Until next time, keep exploring your physical potential through movement, strength, and play. Class dismissed.